Hello and welcome to Eyewitness Report on Channel's television, where those videos and shorts you sent to our portal are given the needed attention. Today on the program, Igbogbo Bayoko residents bewildered by the perceived abandonment of their road project by the Lagos State Government. Economic losses from crude oil theft may continue to mount as the Niger Delta creeks get infested by illegal refineries. Also, Omoli faced two residents endangered by flood ravaging the estate. These and more on Eyewitness Report. I'm Chris Elems. It's no smiling times for residents of Ibubu Bayeku in the Korudu area of Lagos State as the major roads to the town has been left in tatters, abandoned for two years now after construction began. Now, this has worsened commuting around the area with transport fare on the rise. The Bola Ahmed Tinubu Road, Ibe Road, and the Oreya Junction are some sore points infected with potholes. About two years ago, the people of Ibogo Bayeku in the Korodu area of Lagos were excited when the Bola Ahmed Tinubu Road, including Ibe Road, got the attention of Lagos State Government. Within a short period of time, work started. Houses were demolished to create room for expansion of the road, and men and machine were mobilized to the site. Completion period for the project was two years. Two years after, we're here again, and what's on ground has left the people in a state of frustration and the economy prostrate. From the entrance around Nipco filling station are vestiges of what was once a workstation now covered with weeds. The gate firmly shot and not a single soul in sight. Motorists need to be very careful while driving across the waterlogged road to avoid further damage to their vehicles. The people of the locality are pained that 24 months after the work was flagged off, they have returned to an era worse than the area has ever witnessed. When government came to have a meeting with us about three and a half years ago, 2017 precisely, we had like a town hall meeting that, okay, they want to do this road, we are happy. And they told us they are going to do this road from, uh, we, we call this road Ebute Igbogbo Road, and it will go into Bola Ahmed Tinumbu and further down to Oreo Junction and to Igbelara and to Ginchi. Hopefully, it will now join what we call Ijede Road. Honestly, if this government had done that, it will have opened up a lot of businesses. A lot of more businesses will have come into this, this our community. Good roads, of course, brings about good business. But what do we have? Unfortunately, they said, fortunately for us, they started in our presence. We were happy. They told us, they told us it would take two years to finish this road. But two years, we are now talking of almost four years. Just adjacent the palace is a large pool of water, a breeding ground for mosquitoes. Still at the ancestral part of the town are a number of houses chopped up, some completely deserted. Over 400 landlords are set to be affected, with compensation paid to less than one-third of them. At the residence of one of the affected landlords in the area, who also coordinates other landlords, he recounts the sad experience of 2017 that has remained indelible in his 75-year-old heart. By the, day, the time they got here, no notice. We were just in a hurry, packing everything, and it even that created a problem for me. 
The day my house was being demolished, I was shedding tears. I was at that, that day, 73 years old, a pensioner, living on this side that was built in 1999. So when we got that uh, thing, we complained to them Peter, that, how can you demolish our houses without giving us a single day notice? And we heard that when they were about to do it at uh, Ekwe, they were compensated before even demolishing the houses. Why is it that what you did for them at Ekwe, you can't do it for us at Igugo? We are just appealing to them. Old age is not a small thing. And every young man wants to be old. And when you, at your old age, you are being subjected to this kind of thing. I spent most of my life in Britain, and I know it wouldn't have happened in the UK. But when it happens in your country, what do you do? You have to accept it. So just think that if the government, the new government, will be so uh, magnanimous enough to please pay all this money so that we can use it to uh, make necessary arrangement, you can see that here, I need a lot of things to be done here that I can't do. I don't have the money. How much is pension? If I'm not lucky that I'm getting pension from UK, I will have died. A few other affected landlords also tell their tales. When you get old, you are retired. There's no other means of income than your monthly stipend, which cannot carry you. I have about four children in touch and institution. You know, you show up. And the place is not full now. After the demolition, most people move out. And you only have about a quarter of tenants there. So I depend on this and the monthly retirement benefits. So I don't depend on kids. So that's what I depend upon. The Bola Ahmed Tinubu Road in Igbobo plays a very significant role in the locality as it houses the health center, sports center, post office, schools, and other institutions, some of which have also become weather beaten. As for those who ply the road, our presence is an opportunity to vent their frustration. I've been plying this road for the past 10 years, and that is how we manage to pass this road. Sometimes when I buy tire, the tire will not last for three weeks. I will change it, 4,000. The passengers, they are complaining because of the bad road. This one is still better. If you go down, that one is even worse. You understand? We have no option. Another sour point is the Oreo Igbe Road Junction. The people have some words of advice for the state government on how best to effectively tackle gridlock within other parts of Ikorodu. Igbe um, Oreo is also very important. It reduced the pressure on the Tonobu Road. So government should as well, when doing this road, do these shortcuts so that it will reduce the pressure on the main road. As at now, this is not very difficult. Though they are trying to repair uh, or to uh, balance Bola uh, Tinubu way. But if you can easily adjust Igbe Joshon down to Oreo, that will ease this tension on Bolatinumbuwe. While they call on the state government to make the full stretch of Igbe Road as part of the construction, they have however on their own carried out some palliatives on a very bad portion of the road, part of which is to desilt the gutters. For the past many years, this road has been abandoned. In fact, right away there, you, 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 I went to the other time, it was a thick forest. It was just about three days ago that we demolished it and we've, we've extracted all the sand from the gutter to the road, even we are about packing them. If not for that of yesterday's rain, we will have done the package. And it's just community effort. We are six CDAs that teamed together with other youths and some eminent personnel teamed together to put funds together to make sure we make it roadable. It's been like this for about eight years. And this is a major road, very major road, because it links Ijede from here. From here to Ijede is about five, ten minutes. Meanwhile, if you now take alternative route, it will take almost one hour. So this is a commercial center. This is a link road that from here you get to Ijede, from Ijede you can get to Ekwe, which is very close to Victoria Island. So we need the government to actually intervene. It's been quite a while that we've been on this. We've written so many letters to the government. Nothing has been done. It has only been promises and promises and promises. 
At the moment, so many houses on Igwe Road have become empty as the landlords and tenants have moved out due to the condition they have found themselves. As the Songolu administration takes charge of office, the people of Igbo Bayeku will be glad to see contractors back to sites and their roads become motorable once again.